Hello, my wonderful, beautiful friends. Guys, welcome back to our slash I don't work here lady, where Karens continue to mistake regular Joshimo customers as employees. And in today's episode, guys, OP tells a tale about the time his wife was attacked for not obeying someone and decides to teach that idiot a lesson they won't forget. Guys, I hope you enjoyed the stories today. Hit subscribe if you haven't. And as always, you can send or link your post to this email right here. We're diving in. Okay, so my story isn't that crazy, but it's both an I don't work here and someone being incredibly rude. This all happened about a month ago. I went to Walmart on my way to work, and we don't have a uniform, but I was wearing a navy blue polo with a picture of a UPS plane that said UPS Airbus 300 underneath. Nothing like a Walmart employee. While I'm there, I go to the freezer aisle to grab a meal. And while I'm trying to figure out what I want, one of the employees drops a handful of frozen stuff, so I went and helped them pick it up. They thanked me and walked away. And this lady apparently saw me helping, and she walks up to me and told me to help her find something. I tell her that I don't work there, but I have a severe blocking stutter. Which means that while I'm speaking, I'll often stop because I physically can't say the words, so I just stand there with my mouth open. So it happens, and the woman cuts me off with a loud sigh saying, Ugh, I don't have time for this. If you can't talk properly, don't bother. Just go find me someone else to help me. I finally manage to get out of the block, and I tell her that I don't work there, pointing to my shirt with the UPS plane logo on it. She then looks at it for a second, and then she tells me that I'm wearing navy at Walmart, which means I do work at Walmart, and that I need to go get someone else. I then go to say that I don't work here, and excuse me, I have to leave. But of course, I start stuttering again. She then stops me and tells me that I have to help her, and that she's gonna get my manager and tell them how horrible I am. I then tell her to go ahead, because clearly I don't work there. And that's when she grabs my wrist and pulls me to someone working in the clothes section, right across the frozen food section. She then raises her voice and tells them to get a supervisor, which they do. And at this point, I'm annoyed because I knew I was losing time to get through TSA at a decent time. So I roll my eyes. She then gets angry that I sighed and rolled my eyes, and she starts yelling at me, saying she's gonna get me in so much trouble. The supervisor comes over, and she starts yelling at him because how dare they even consider hiring someone who can't even speak properly. And they need to get competent people working for them who can actually talk to customers to help, not idiots. To which the supervisor looks uncomfortable for her comments and confused because he clearly saw my shirt and he knew I didn't work there. He then looked at me and asked if I wanted to leave, and I just nodded because I know that when I'm flustered, my stuttering gets even worse. So he tells me to go ahead and to have a good day, and I just leave, not even getting my lunch. All the while, she's still angrily talking to him about firing useless employees. And yes, she did make me late, but at least my boss thought this story was funny. Okay, yeah, first of all, I, I just want to say that I feel so bad for OP for having that happen, and having her say such rude and hateful things towards him. And second, I never understand when people say, oh, your shirt is blue, so you have to work at Walmart. Like, that's not how it works at all. And it's not the first post I've read, guys, where Karens have said that, which is really weird. And lastly, OP should have definitely gone the mile and gotten the police involved to teach this woman not to grab people's wrists and drag them around stores. And I love this comment right Right here this person says for anyone with a speech impediment there's a couple of gestures that might come in handy the pun is intended first dual extended middle fingers second point at the offender with one index finger while simultaneously pointing your other index finger at your temple and moving it in such a manner as to describe a circle thus telling the importuning idiot f you you're crazy all right so I was filming a video at work the other day. We helped to film safety videos for other people's places of work. This particular video had a quippy bit along the lines of, even an Olympic weightlifter shouldn't attempt these heavy maneuvers without noting proper form and procedure. Now I do almost exclusively behind the scenes stuff, but occasionally I do pitch in when we have non-speaking parts like this that aren't worth coordinating an actor for. So for the parts, I put on this very hokey Olympic weightlifter costume that was literally a pair of spandex shorts and a shirt that said weightlifter on it, with the Olympic rings and the US flag sewn on. 
probably nothing like what Olympians actually wear, but it's much easier and cheaper for getting the joke across. I then pretend to execute this particular company's operations improperly, while acting in pain, and the whole thing took maybe 20 minutes, but I still had a lot of work to do, and we were way behind, so I didn't find the time to stop and change back to my regular clothes. The end of the day comes, and the whole project had taken a lot longer than we anticipated, so we were all exhausted and eager to get out of there. I hurried home, and I was just walking up the front of my apartment building, when this gorgeous woman flags me down. Now I did a double take because surely she couldn't be talking to me. And something critically important to know at this juncture is I'm pretty much the picture of average, physically and personally. But anyways, this becomes relevant and not just because of my sad dating life. Hang on. So this stunning woman touches my shoulder, rendering me speechless and also confirming that I'm who she was after. She says to me, oh perfect. Hi, my name's Tanya, and I'm your neighbor across the hall. I don't think we've formally met before, and look, my friend's moving in on the third floor, and the moving company she hired doesn't have insurance, so the landlord isn't letting them up. Any chance you could help us? I mean, clearly, it wouldn't be a challenge for you. She again brushes against me flirtatiously. So as this is happening, I've realized that she's seen my costume shirt from the shoot, and she's inferred that I'm some kind of world-class weightlifter. Now at this point, I don't want to perpetuate a lie, but I also don't want her to lose interest in me. Like, this is a beautiful woman right in my building, and I figured as long as she doesn't explicitly ask, hey, were you in the Olympics? It's not exactly lying, right? So the convoluted plan that I'd formed in my head is that I would help her move, because even I can lift boxes. And then once we had a date scheduled and she asked me about my Olympic glory, I would say, oh, that, huh, let me explain. And that would be a funny misunderstanding, and we could look back and laugh about it, because by then, enough time would have passed that she would have seen the other worthwhile qualities in me. Like how I can keep any houseplant alive and have really organized closets. Basically the same thing as being an Olympian, right? So I confidently tell her, that's not a problem. What needs moving? And oh my god, she motions me to follow her and I get over to the curb near the truck and the first things I see are a whole sectional couch, a five-tiered wooden armoire, a grandfather clock, a massage chair, a treadmill, and a box spring. Now clearly I'm not an Olympic weightlifter, and she has no idea that just lifting my regular boxes when I'd move was a major physical undertaking for me. That required multiple breaks, and I didn't even live in a unit accessed by stairs. But I was determined to impress this girl. And more importantly at that point, not to horrifically humiliate myself in a scene that would surely spread to the rest of the tenants. So I once again allowed a convoluted, not so much a plan this time as a delusion to form for me. Mentally. I figured there's three of us. There's me, there's her, there's her friend. So none of the objects could be too difficult to transport. Plus, I just spent the day listening to professionals instruct on the safest way to lift heavy objects. So we start with the armoire because it was the closest to the door and it was the most valuable item. What her friend was most worried about leaving on the street. Now, they actually wanted one of the girls to stay out there to watch the stuff, but I knew I'd have no chance of getting any of these things up three flights of stairs. So I convinced them that for their own safety, in regard to weight distribution, there needs to be three of us helping. So we lift the thing, and we got it to the door, and I was immediately physically and mentally dying from just having to step over the little hump between the door and the lobby. I felt like my arms had been crushed by a steamroller by the time we got to the stairs, and my core was twisted up like a pretzel. I was so tense that I could barely get a breath in. I was grateful that it was at least obscuring my face because I probably looked like a high diver just before they hit the water. And worse, the girls were not making too intense of an effort to carry their end. Figuring I had it covered, so they were making unlabored casual conversation with me, and I was too strained to give any real response. And then we get to the stairs. In the back of my mind, where my conscience probably is, I knew I had to stop putting up this ridiculous act and confront the fact that I could not move all this stuff because I'm not a weightlifter. But the logic part of my brain was telling me that there's no way to stop on the stairs while simultaneously resting the thing. If I set it down even for just a second, it would slip because of the width and the angle of the stairs. Just when I start to feel the lightheadedness really intensifying, I tripped over my own feet, and in an effort to steady myself, I shot a hand out onto the banister and I lost the grip on my end. 
I then yelled out, both because I wanted to warn the girls who were on the other side before they were crushed by the thing, and because the thing fell onto my toes, and it went crashing down the stairs, and it shattered down onto the concrete entry floor. The girls managed to get out of the way though, which is the important thing. I then had to explain that I was not, in fact, an Olympic weightlifter, or a lifter of any things of any kind, and I will likely have to buy her a new armoire because I'm sure this one is broken. Oh, I'm also sure at least two of my toes are broken, so I got my karma for being disingenuous. Luckily, the neighbor and her friend and my new neighbor were pretty understanding about the situation, and when my toes healed, I planned to draw inspiration from this otherwise abysmal experience to maybe sometimes hit the gym. Oh my goodness guys, like this is exactly what happens when the ego takes over and you lie to try to impress a random girl you just met. You might end up breaking her stuff and having to pay for it. But guys, I love this story so much and when I read it, I got a good laugh out of it because it just kept getting worse and worse and worse. Alright, so my best friend is finally getting married, and as the best man, I'm way too far behind on things, such as getting my own formal wear tailored as I've lost a ton of weight over the past year. Also, being Valentine's Day, the wife and I decide to go to the appointment at the local shop together, before grabbing some wings and beers for happy hour. So as I'm standing in the mini fun house of mirrors, with what appears to be a 207 year old Asian lady controlling my every move, only saying no 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 anytime I even shift my weight, I hear a man, roughly 6 foot tall, 200 pounds, saying excuse me over and over again. Now I'm assuming he's looking for another member of staff, and the three of us ignore him entirely. Finally, after the third or fourth excuse me, the guy screams are you effing deaf? As he grabs my wife's arm and he spins her around violently. Now, my wife is a 5 foot tall woman and she's about 105 pounds. However, being the daughter of a retired US Air Force colonel and a current agent of the Alphabet Gang and a retired Navy lieutenant herself, my wife has years of training in a few schools of martial arts, such as Krav Maga and Taekwondo. So as the man spins her around and towers over her, she elbowed him in the diaphragm and firm but gently pushed him back away from her while stating, I don't work here. Keep your hands off me. Now having God knows how many needles and such all through my inner thigh and nether regions, I wasn't really able to move, so I did the next best thing and attempted to tell the guy to F off and to leave my wife alone. But before I could get any words out, however, old boy had decided to charge my wife in a full fighting stance. With nothing else to really do, my wife takes a half step back, into a stance that I'm used to seeing on Saturday mornings. The dude goes to draw back a punch, leaning all of his weight into it, and that's when my wife spins, and as she comes back around, the Doc Martens that she's wearing connects with the side of the guy's face, full tread pattern. And unlike in the movies, the guy didn't go flying through the air spinning. It just knocked him fully unconscious. The dude tumbles into one of those circular racks of clothing, almost completely disappearing inside. Finally, another member of staff comes running, saying that the police are on their way. It took like 3 minutes for the police to arrive, and as they walked in, the dude was just finding his way out of the tangle of expensive clothes that I thought would be his tomb. So with statements from myself, the two staff, and finally the cameras, the dude not only found himself with a shattered orbital and a few broken teeth, but he was also handcuffed to the gurney as they load him inside an ambulance. I swear, I can't take her anywhere. So yeah, talk about learning a painful lesson and the dude deserves it for sure. And guys, I've said this so many times, this is why you always keep your hands to yourself because you never know what people are capable of and how they're gonna react when they're grabbed or touched or made feel uncomfortable. And Whip Solo, if you're listening, my man, you should take your wife everywhere because maybe she'll teach a few other idiots like this not to just grab random strangers, like the woman in the first story. So I was just reminded of this story not too long ago. A little note and background. I, at the time, was 17 years old, and my best friend is also 17 years old. We're both female, and we'll call my friend Grace. At the time, Grace was working at the Wall of Marts, and I was working at my village grocery store. This story takes place at her workplace, on her day off. We went to Grace's work to do some shopping because it was homecoming season. Grace was wearing a grey hoodie and blue jeans, and I was wearing a black hoodie and black ripped jeans, and a beanie. So safe to say, nothing like a worker's uniform. 
When we got there, we went straight to the blankets because I would always feel more comfortable with something soft in my hands. And a side note, I also have autism, sensory issues, and I also have social anxiety. So basically, I hate it when someone I don't know or trust comes into my personal space. So we're just leaving the blanket area and we hear it. The dreadful sounds of nails on a chalkboard. A woman saying, excuse me. Now me and Grace thought that she was talking to someone else, so we keep moving forward thinking nothing of it. But boy oh boy, that was a big mistake to this crazy lady. She comes up to us again as we stop by the art stuff and she says, I said, excuse me, with such a high-pitched voice that makes us both jump. We then look at the lady, and Grace says, yes, can I help you? And the woman says, finally I got your attention. Listen, I need one of you to help me get something. So that's when I tell her that I don't work here, and I'm sure someone else who's working can help you. But surprise, surprise, she doesn't listen. The woman says, just come, I need help, and you will come help me. At this point, I'm starting to shake a bit, and I'm breathing a little heavy because yelling's a bit of a trigger for me. Plus, I really hate loud noises. Now, Grace is the best friend that I could ever ask for. She sees this out of the corner of her eye, and she sees me getting nervous and having a slight panic attack. So to try to de-escalate the situation, she cuts the woman off and says, Okay, show us what you need, and we'll see what we can do. But Grace, being the genius she is, she just planned to ditch her. So the lady thinking that she'll get what she wants starts to lead the way. We walk behind her until she left the aisle and that's when Grace gives me the look and we book it away from the woman as fast as we can in the opposite direction. We go to the other side of the store thinking that's that but no 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 I wouldn't be writing this now would I? So we're in the chip aisles just looking around and Grace is about halfway down the aisle from me when all of a sudden I feel someone grab my wrist hard. It was Karen, and she found us. She starts screaming right in my face, saying how dare I leave her when I have a job to do, that I'm lazy and she's trying to drag me at this point. I'm in full-blown panic attack, and it's either fight or flight at this point. And I start to try to fight her, screaming at the top of my lungs, saying don't touch me, and I manage to kick and hit her a couple of times. She then lets go of my wrist and she goes for my hair, screaming that she's gonna drag me to find a manager. Grace during the whole time was trying to help me and she was screaming for help. Thankfully a manager that she's good friends with came up and the manager knew me pretty well and she also knew that if anyone I don't know touched me, it's gonna get a lot worse. The manager then screams that they're calling the police, so the cops end up calling. Grace and the manager told the cops the same thing, but the lady seeing the police starts screaming that I need to be arrested and put into a crazy home. She says that I attacked her and she was trying to defend herself, blah blah blah. So while the lady is still screaming and telling the cops to arrest me and to take me away and that I'm the crazy one, I calm down enough to give the cops as much information as I could while Grace is telling me that I'm okay, it's gonna be okay while I'm still shaking. I tell the cops to check the cameras and I didn't attack her first, I was defending myself. So the cops of course asked the manager to see the CCTV footage and the lady went pale as a ghost. So long story short, she was under arrest for assaulting a minor, and she was also charged with resisting arrest. And the woman got a nice pair of bracelets and a trip to the police station. Me and Grace got a ride to the hospital, and yes, I still got my blanket in the end, thanks to the manager who was nice enough to pay for it for me. When my mom and dad found out about this, all hell broke loose. It turns out the lady was already on probation for doing something similar in the next date over, so there's more charges against her. So lady, I hope that whatever you needed that day was worth it. Yeah, nothing in Walmart is that important, guys. Maybe it's just me, and I don't care enough, but if I were in Karen's shoes and Opie happened to be an employee that just disappeared after agreeing to help me, I would have just found someone else, not hunt down that person and attack them. Like, some people are just too freaking crazy and have way too much time on their hands. This happened to me like a month ago. I was running errands and my final stop was to buy some groceries. I had just gotten off work and I was still in my work uniform, which is a black polo with the big word staff across the back and my company's logo on the front of the shirt. Now I hate walking into stores with a staff shirt on. I'm not a fan of strangers knowing where I work or causing confusion for having a staff shirt on when I don't work at a business. For this reason, if I'm in my work shirt, I will usually throw on a jacket or a hoodie before walking in someplace. 
This is exactly what I did just before entering the grocery store. So my staff shirt for the place that I do work was covered by an oversized varsity jacket with studs and a big tiger across the back. And I also have some ripped black jeans on. The uniform for the grocery store is a green branded t-shirt and khaki pants. I look nothing like the staff there. Now I developed some habits during COVID, so when I go to grab a shopping cart, I stop by the sanitizing station to wipe down the cart before I begin shopping. As I'm finishing up wiping down my shopping cart, another shopper walks in, a man with a baseball cap on. The man sees me cleaning my shopping cart, he walks up to me and says, oh great, thanks and then tries to grab the cart and walk away. Now, not understanding yet that he thought I worked here, I think he's trying to steal the cart from me. And I have a vice grip on the back of the cart, which causes him to stumble. The guy whips his head back around and he goes, Hey, what do you think you're doing? You should. And that's when he cuts off mid-sentence and actually looks at me, in my ripped skinny jeans and tiger varsity jacket. The guy then quietly says, Oh, you don't work here, do you? before immediately turning around and walking away into the grocery store without a cart of his own. As I watched him walk away, finally realizing that he thought I was cleaning the cart for him, I can see him pulling his baseball hat so low down on his head in shame. He then stood in the distance by a soda display, hat low, and turns to face the shopping cart section, no doubt waiting for me to leave the area. I chuckled as I walked away to do my shopping, and when I was finally a safe distance away, I catch him out of the corner of my eye, slowly approaching the carts again. The guy shook his head and starts to grab one, and I'm thinking, it's alright man, we all make mistakes. Hey, at least the guy realized his mistake halfway, and he didn't blindly go full Karen on OP, right? Because I've read stories before where people just can't seem to admit their mistakes, and they just double down and take it as far as they can, often getting arrested by police. And that, my friends, brings us to another end of our slash I don't work here, lady. Guys, I hope you enjoyed today's stories. If you did, hit that thumbs up. And if you're not subscribed, consider subscribing so you don't miss these crazy, crazy Karen stories. And if you missed yesterday's episode on the channel, it's an r slash entitled people episode where a Karen decides to donate OP's baby to her brother who desperately needs it more than OP does. A freaking baby, guys. So go check it out if you haven't. And myself and Stevie Boy will see you guys in the next one. We love you.